everybody, welcome back to my channel for another Tribulation Harvest video. Today we're going to be talking about the last Trump. And I think I have a take on it that I really haven't heard out there. And um, I'm, th I'm hoping that you'll take the time to consider what I have to say. So he let me begin first by reading the portion of scripture that we're going to be discussing in its 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 51 and 52. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep but we will all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Now, many people are convinced that the last trump referred to here in 1 Corinthians is either referring to the last trump of Rosh Hashanah, or referring to the last trump uh, as mentioned in the book of Revelation. We've all seen where it's called the seventh trumpet. It's not really called the last trump, but it's the last trumpet in the series of trumpet judgments. We've all seen the blogs and vlogs uh, or sat in church services or Bible study where we were taught one theory or the other. Many Christians are convinced that it has to be one of the two. They're steadfast in their beliefs and can offer up reasons why their adherence to that particular theory is logically correct. But I often question things, and after a while I began to believe that neither one of these theories make, makes much sense to me. And here's why. I'm going to give you three scriptures. The first is in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, where Jesus says, Jesus says, but that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Which means Jesus doesn't even know. But my Father only. In that same chapter, verse 44, Jesus says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour that ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. So he's telling, he's telling believers to be ready. Because in an hour that we don't even think he's coming, he's coming. Again, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 13, it's Jesus says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So if no man or angel, or even Jesus, knows when that will be, and if he says that he's coming in such an hour that we, do, that we don't even expect him, then how can we even suggest that it will be at the last trump of Rosh Hashanah or any, of any given year? Because it can be predicted that it will happen at that time. And if not this year, then next year. And if not next year, then the year after that. It will always be expected at the end of Rosh Hashanah. So we could say that it can be predicted in any given year if it were to be this particular last trump. Do you hear what I'm saying? Christians get hung up on the Feast of Trumpets every year, anticipating that at the last trump of this high holiday, they'll be raptured. How many people are disappointed year after year when it doesn't happen? How many have fallen away from the faith after they were, they were assured by those deemed more mature than them, that this was the year of the greatest evacuation that the world has ever seen. I also question how we can be assured that it will happen at the end of the trumpet judgments that are spoken about in the book of Revelation. That can also be predicted because the seventh trumpet judgment occurs mid-tribulation. We may not know the hour, but if the tribulation lasts seven years, on the lunar solar calendar, which is also known as a Jewish calendar, we can calculate where the midpoint is in the tribulation, 1,260 days. So knowing this date would give us the knowledge that Jesus said that none of us would have. So if both of those trumpet blasts can be more or less calculated, more or less predicted, how is it possible that Jesus would say that we wouldn't know the day, that he would return unexpectedly? Unexpectedly. 
I have a different theory that I'd like to throw into the mix. What if God isn't referring to either one of those two trumpet blasts? Think about that. What if there was a trumpet blast that we weren't even considering, that didn't even come to mind, because it's an Old Testament reference, which can't be calculated, because we were never told that it would ever be used again? That would mean that it would be a totally unpredictable event. So even though we know we're in the season, we'd be taken by surprise when it actually happened. Because there would be absolutely no way to predict the day or time of this other trumpet blast. So if the last trumpet doesn't relate to Rosh Hashanah, and it doesn't relate to the seventh trumpet judgment, what am I referring to? There is a portion of scripture in Exodus that mentions another heavenly trumpet that was blown. The similarities between, the, between that event and the coming rapture is compelling. Is it possible that the last trump spoken of in 1 Corinthians could be the same trumpet that was blown in Exodus chapter 19, verse 16 through 18? Is everybody grabbing their Bible and flipping through and trying to get there before me? Hold on, because here's the scripture. So it came about on the third day when it was morning that there were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud, remember that, a cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. So they all heard it all at the same time. And Moses brought the people up out of the camp to meet God. So at the trumpet blast, everybody was brought to meet God. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. So God descended in the smoke and in the clouds. He was upon that mountain. And its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. Now, the trumpet in this portion of Scripture wasn't just any trumpet. It was, a, it was actually a special ram's horn that was blown from heaven. If we go back a few verses to Exodus chapter 19 in the second half of verse 13, so we'll call it 13b, it says, When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. The blast of the horn to go meet God. This happened just after God's people were delivered from the hands of the Pharaoh and the bonds of Egypt. Just as they were delivered from the bond of Egypt, will we be delivered from the bonds of this world, from the bonds of the flesh, at the next blast of the ram's horn from heaven? Could the trumpet that heralded the arrival of God in the cloud at the top of the mountain be the one that will herald the arrival of Jesus in the clouds as well? Could this be the heralding trumpet that's going to be blown one last time when God calls us up out of the camp to meet him. It's a point of view that I've never heard before, but it's highly likely that I'm not the only one who has mentioned this point of view. Could this be why the bride of Christ is going to be unaware as to the actual time of the rapture? We know the season, but how can we possibly know the day or the hour? This point of view makes the rapture totally unpredictable, just as Jesus said it would be. I think this is an interesting take on the subject and one that I hope will generate some conversation in the comment section below. As I said, we've been taught to believe one theory or another concerning the last trump, but if Jesus says it is not possible for us to know the day or hour, then why put much thought into it? Just know that it will happen and that we need to be like the wise virgins who kept their lamps full. If we do that, then we won't need to be concerned about when the Lord will return because we'll always be at the ready. Thank you for joining me again. I hope you leave comments in the comments section below. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you like the content that I'm producing. Thank you for joining me again. God bless. Bye.